I cannot speak about my life. When you say, who is Alfredo Irizarry? Alfredo Irizarry is one of Paul Goodman's kids from the, from the First Street School. Paul opened up the first Montessori school in the United States. It happened to be on First Street. Again, it was one of those luck of the draw. It, it, that school happened to be on the block where I was raised. And, and keep in mind, too, that it was during a time when there was, the gangs were still heavy. So we were very territorial, very territorial. We would not let, literally, white people come into our neighborhood. Because we thought, right, oh, Italiano, you know, no, 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 it's not Italiano. Judio, Judio, oh, Judio, oh, wait, 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 Judio, no, Jewish, no, Italiano. We said, oh, oh, okay, Judio, oh. Paul was the first one that started breaking through that, 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 uh, that paranoia that we had. Because, you know, I, I, I can, you can imagine, me growing up, I remember playing in the handball, having the Italians drive by in convertibles with guns, bang! just riding down a block as a little kid, you know, and we're like, oh, hit the floor, you know, everybody hits the floor, and the bullets are all over the place, what's going on? Paul, Paul, back in the days, he, you know, he came in, I mean, he knocked on, knocked on my door, he, he, the guy, the, the guy, the, he, had, he had cojones, man, he had chuspa, and that's what everybody liked about him, my father, especially my father, all, all the, you know, those, the, that generation of Puerto Ricans, you know, they, they, they loved that in him. He was like, no, I got the school over here. I want to train these kids, you know, to help them get educated so they can go to college and do this. And because education is, is, is freedom and it's power, you know. And so they understood that, and that's why they were there, trying to better themselves. So they were like, okay, you're going to take my son to your st storefront? They will go down there, look at the storefront, they see all the things that he had and all that. Okay, you can take my son. Where was Paul coming from when he started that? I mean, you know, he's one of the most famous social scientists of the past hundred years. Well, we don't know him as that. We know him as a, as a regular guy. Mm -hmm. As a regular guy that came into our neighborhood and our parents, oh, and, you know, okay, you can come. You can come. He used to come to my house and sit down and eat rice and beans with my father and talk politics with my father. That's the type of guy he was. He was like a, a down-to-earth guy, very intelligent, you know, interested in my parents especially. They were like, oh, este es un hombre bueno. Listen to him. Listen to him and listen to what he has to say. And I was like, yeah, I play handball with him. He, he used to come in, he, used to, he, think that he, he thought that he could beat us in handball, but we lived <laughs> for handball. At handball. You know, that's how he got us. Because he would come and say, he would, he would play with us. We were young and we were like, Bam! We would make him run. You would see, he would like, he would be huffing and puffing, and and then we was like, and then we were like, wow, this guy is like, he's he's a great guy, you know. So that's how that's how we got all of us, and then all the, a lot of the kids from my generation, all of us went into that school, all of us went there, and then uh, the school became very successful. He opened up another site on Second Street between Second Avenue and Third Avenue, and that's where they eventually wrote the book, and then I. And when I went into the service, the military, uh, when I came out, just before I came out, he passed away. I got a chance to see him, and he saw me, and you know, you know, he was like, he was like, he was like a father figure to us, and we loved him. Hearts are like diamonds, because it takes pressure from the world to make a person good or bad. Hearts are like diamonds, because it takes suffering to make a person wise and fruitful. The poetic movement here in this country is as a result of. Jorge Brandon's inspiration. Jorge Brandon was the greatest poet that Puerto Rico has ever had. I don't think there will ever be another great poet like, like the teacher, our teacher. He was the personification of, uh, of Plato. There's only one Plato, there's only one Shakespeare. There's only one Jorge Brandon. A tertulias. They're, they're, this is a Spaniard, a Spaniard tradition. They used to have regular tertulias. Tertulias um, is an event where they all gather together in different towns 
and they talk about the social problems, the political problems, the economical problems, and they come up with solutions and then they put them into action. So he grew up in that, in that environment, in that tradition, and then when he came here in that influx in the 40s, uh, escaping the uh, persecution, because obviously he was, they, they had threatened to kill him, because um, he, um, again, he was a, a personal friend of Pedro Abisus Campo, and anybody that was affiliated with the Nationalist Party, they wanted to destroy it and wipe it out completely, so many of them fleeing for their lives escaped over here to the United States. And, and uh, Brandon, Jorge Brandon, the Coco Que Habla was one of them. He was the one that opened up the sessions, La Tertulias. He would, he would recite some of his poems, and then he would give some dialogue about what was happening, and then he would move to the side, and then every, let everybody else have their input. But he specifically taught us that it is our responsibility, it is our obligation as artists to give back to society, especially when the society has ills and woes and problems, and it's going through trials and tribulations. He says, it is your responsibility and obligation to give back and to teach the next generation, to keep this cycle going.